Praise the Lord, God's children. Grace and peace unto you, children of God. Welcome to the Master's Word. help if I don't mute my microphone. <laughs> I'm Dr. Stephanie. I'm your host. You know, all of our classes are designed to give you a firm foundation in the Word of God, so you won't want to miss any of them. However, if you can't make it to our virtual classroom, then know that all of these are archived for your study convenience on uh, Ustream.tv, Spreaker.com, and our website, themasterstouch.org. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, as we come into your presence with praise and thanksgiving in our hearts, our love and adoration is flowing from our lips. We exalt you, praise you, and lift you before all men. Father, we thank you for your word. Um, we thank you for we uh, we thank you for your word, and we praise you for our, for our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ and His finished work on the cross on our behalf. Thank you for your gifts of revelation, knowledge, your rhema word, and the ability to speak your word with proper utterance. Bless those that have ears to hear, Lord, as you impart wisdom through your word. In the name above all names, the matchless name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Now today we're going to look further into the blessing. And once again, we're going to begin at the beginning. We're on the trail of learning who we are in Christ and where we, uh, wh and when, where, and why we're empowered by God. Amen. Now if you spend much time at all at all around the group a group of believers excuse me <laughs> there's one word you're surely going to hear and it's a good word a bible word a word we toss back and forth in conversation with ease and frequency and and uh there's one problem with it however scripturally speaking now we don't fully understand what it means we have very little idea of the real power be behind it or the history the word i'm talking about once again is the blessing and most of us uh, think that word re simply refers to something good that God gives us, a gift that he bestows on us. I mean, I can't begin to tell you how many students that I have over the years asked that question. But when I start teaching about the blessing, I'll say, start it out by, tell me what you think the blessing is. And they always tell me it's a, a gift from God, good, good things that he gives us. But the blessing of God actually extends far beyond that, my friends. It includes not only his gifts, but the creative power behind them. It speaks not only of what we've been given, but of who we are and what God has anointed us to do. So what I'm saying to you is this. If you're a born-again child of God, the blessing encompasses your identity, it encompasses your capacity, and it encompasses your call. Now, a statement like that might sound like an exaggeration, and it would be if I were using the word blessing like the word uh, we, to mean uh, an isolated outbreak of God's goodness like most people do. But, uh, especially in just in some area of your life. But I'm not talking about a blessing like that. I'm talking about the blessing. And that is a far greater thing. <clears throat> now, the blessing is an empowerment to prosper. The blessing is God's ability on your ability, giving you the supernatural ability to do what you couldn't do before. The blessing is released, how? Through words. God blessed Sarah and told her that she would be the mother of nations in Genesis 17, 16. Listen to this. I will bless her and will surely give you a son by her. I will bless her so that she will be the mother of nations. Kings of peoples will come from her. God blesses you so that you can be a blessing to others. God blessed Abraham so that all families of the earth would be blessed through him. Genesis 12, 1 through 3. The Lord had said to Abram, go from your country, your people and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on the earth will be blessed through you. Now God wants you to be a distribution center. <laughs> he wants you to be like uh, Abraham. Um, look, a distribution center is, is a, a funnel by which God can release his favor through you to prevent misfortune in someone else's life. God won't just bless you for your benefit. He'll bless you so that you can help others. Allow God to use you to be a blessing to others. And if you're born again, God has, has blessed you for that purpose. Ephesians 1.3, praise be to God, uh, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. You must connect with the blessing on your life by faith. All right, so let's talk briefly about the blessing or the curse. 
When something from this world happens to you, what do you do? Do you whine and cry, why me? Or do you take dominion and authority over the situation or circumstance right then? Well, let me tell you what you should be doing. As a believer, you must first and foremost go immediately to the Bible and see what God has said about your solution. Uh, you mean the, what God has said about the solution to your situation. So find out what God's word says about your situation is number one. And having established that, God says about th that usually that you don't have to endure it. You must keep in mind the following. Number two, whatever is contrary to the word of God is the curse. I'm going to say that again. That's why we send you to the Bible, to see what God says about your situation or your circumstances, because whatever is contrary to the word of God is the curse. Now, people who are living in the world under the dictates of situations and circumstances are living in a space that is equated to what I'll call the delayed curse. In other words, they get a little bit of relief from the situation or circumstance, but they can't seem to attain the fullness of the blessing. Um, then things begin to go right, and um, uh, <coughs> for a little while anyway, they get then they get happy. All right, uh, then all of a sudden, boom! The onset of some horrible thing happens to them. That is the delayed curse. It is not the blessing in operation. Well, well, okay then. Just how do I find out how the blessing works? Well, once I find it, how do I learn to operate in it? You find it in God's word and keep this in mind. No word, no blessing. If you lack knowledge, then uh, your the word, word of God says that my people perish for lack of knowledge. So if you lack knowledge, you're not going to get anything. Let's take a look at the root of the curse. How does the curse come on us? Well, the curse comes by fear. Fear is the forerunner of the curse, and it's also the brings up the rear end. <laughs> so you're going along fine, and then you listen to the news, and you hear that the economy is shot, and folks are losing their jobs. You begin to worry as to whether you might lose yours. What is that? It's fear. Remember me telling you that you're always in some kind of faith? <laughs> well, if you're not in faith and walking in God's word, then you are in the curse. If things don't see, um, if they don't seem to be too bad right now, but on the horizon it looks pretty bleak, and you are doing all you can to ensure that you won't be affected by the situation, then uh, you are in the delayed curse. How do I know this? Because God word, God's word tells us that faith comes by hearing the word of God. Now, how does fear come? It comes the same way. Fear or the curse comes by hearing the evil reports. From who? From where? From the news, from the naysayers, anytime you listen to things that are contrary to God's word, you will eventually put action to those negative thoughts and fears and you will find yourself locked into and operating in the curse. Now remember this, if you are born again, you are a child of God. You are Abraham's seed and therefore you are heir to the blessing. So if you think you're not rich, then you're in fear of not having enough. You're living in the curse, my friends. When you realize that you are Abraham's seed and heir to the blessing, all right, that the blessing, all prosperity, okay, then the things that you want and need are already yours, then you don't have a problem. You're living in the in the, the blessing. It's only a matter of however long it takes, my friends, to get them to manifest from the supernatural into the natural into your hands. That depends on your faith level. All right, now let me let me establish something here. I'm going to go back over this a little bit because I want to make sure you get this. If you're born again, you are Abraham's seed. And then you're, you're heir to the blessing. Because uh, Jesus gave that to him. He said, I'll bless all your seed. Okay, and here we are. So, if you're born again and you're in Christ, then you will operate in the blessing. If you don't, and you um, are concerned and worrying all the time about... Uh, your job and your paycheck isn't going to make it to to stretch this week and oh and you have I mean oh everything's fine as long as you don't have some unforeseen crisis arise up a sickness disease the kids have to go to ER or something like that uh, then you're fine but the minute that something cuts into what you've planned and budgeted and and worked out um, when minute something comes in, cuts into that uh, you know what happens you panic. And, oh, what am I going to do? I've got, I guess I'll have to work two jobs now. Or, well, I don't think I can cut that. I have, we have Aunt 
Aunt Mary's coming to visit, and oh my gosh, I wasn't expecting her, and that's going to take all of our grocery budget. Now what am I going to do for the rest of the month or the rest of the week if you get paid every two weeks or something like that? It's like, how long can I stretch this? Well, I guess I could take a payday advance. You know, you're busy manipulating. You're worrying. You're living in the curse. Now when you realize that you are heir to the blessing and that that blessing is all prosperity in your life, then the things you want and need are already yours. You see, everything you need is already yours because God says, I will uh, provide for you according to my riches and glory by Christ Jesus. All right, so that means if you're not in Christ, he's not going to prov provide for you. You're on your own. But if you're in Christ, you're born again, then when you're born again, you go into Christ. Remember me teaching you that? Okay, then when you're in Christ, all those things, all the provision that you need is already yours. Then it's only a matter of however long it takes to get them from God to you. All right? And that depends on your level of faith. All right. Now, I'm, I said that and you're all going to go, oh, no, that's not true. Because last week and the week before that, at the time before that, on one of your programs, you told us that we don't have to stand on our own faith level. That's correct. And that's exactly where I'm going. The more you believe God and his word and the quicker those items will manifest to you. That's right. Because why? Because God's the provider. He's your only source. You don't go to... Um, I use this example in one of my other lessons. If you're sent up in a rocket ship to the moon and the, the pilot of the rocket ship puts you there on the moon and gives you some provisions and says, I'll be back in a few weeks with some more provisions and then takes off, you have no, ma no way to get back to, the, to earth to get to another source where you could get to the grocery store or something for food. If that guy doesn't get there, you've got nothing. You'll starve. You'll die there because he's your source. You're looking to him as your source. And in that case, he would be your source, wouldn't he? Okay. So take that now and apply it to this. God is your source. He said he would provide for you. He made a covenant with you. He made a covenant with Abraham and Abraham's seed. And you are a descendant of Abraham when you are born again. So that prosperity belongs to you. That source is yours. Not your paycheck, not your job, not the government check that you get, or the uh, uh, welfare uh, credit card thingy that gives you your uh, food stamps. Not that, my friends. God is your source. You look to him and thank him for providing for you, and you watch that blessing get there closer and closer and closer until it finally is just in your lap. You see, like I said, the more you believe God, and his word, so what does his word say about it? He said he'd prosper you. Then the quicker those items will manifest in your life. But when you're pulled to and fro on every wave of doctrine, it will take a long time because that way of believing is double-minded. When you can't, oh, well, I'm okay, I'm okay this way. And I, here, God, I'm giving this to you. And then, oops, I'm taking it back. And here it is for you again. And oops, I'm taking it back. You're double-minded. You don't believe God. Most Christians live in the delayed curse. They get a residue off the splash of the blessing as it passes them by, and they think that they've been blessed. But it's simply the delayed curse. Good. Now, but, as on, it, but only as long as they can keep their thoughts positive, you see. <laughs> They're, oh, well, I, I'm okay. But as long as you can keep your thoughts positive, you're fine. Somehow you find yourself slipping into believing that the world, what the world says and not consulting God on what he has to say about it. So what happens? You continue to live in the delayed curse, always wondering why God doesn't bless you fully. All right. Confess that you are blessed and that the blessing is working in you and on you and around you. Develop a blessing consciousness. Don't allow circumstances to affect your, your confidence in the blessing on your life. Don't allow circumstances to affect your confidence in the Word of God and what God has promised you. If you don't know what the Bible says about you, you won't, you'll never live in anything but the delayed curse or the curse at all because you're ignorant of what the Word says. Avoid sin because it's a blessing blocker. All right? The blessing will make you rich and adds no sorrow or stress to your life. Proverbs 10, 22. The blessing of God of the Lord brings wealth without pain toil, and toil for it. Being rich is not limited to financial wealth, my friends, though it does include money, uh, because that's our mode of exchange. A person may be rich in material goods, but lacking in spiritual prosperity or other areas of his life. Look at Revelation chapter 3, verse 17. You say, I am rich, I have acquired wealth and do not need a thing, but you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. You see, to be rich is to be whole in every area of your life, spirit, soul, body, finances, and relationships. 
And when the blessing is on your life, it's all good. You're not rich until every area of your life is whole with nothing missing or lacking. Prosperity is like a pie made up of several slices, each one being an aspect of the prosperous life. For example, healing, money, deliverance, a healthy marriage, that kind of thing. The enemy stole pieces of the prosperity pie when Adam sinned in the Garden of Eden. But Jesus restored the whole prosperity pie through his death and resurrection. If something seems to be a blessing, but yet you're stressed out, depressed, in debt, and struggling to hold on to it, it's not a blessing from God. The blessing brings with it sweatless victory, my friends. False prosperity is acting as if you're prosperous, when in reality you're still lacking in areas of your life. You are struggling behind the scenes to keep your level of life up. You know, there are sleepless nights, and then your wife says, I need new clothes, I need a car, but I just got ahead. I have a little extra cash. Not anymore. The dishwasher broke, and I have to get a new one. Funds are depleted. You begin to seek a second, a third, uh, uh, and a fourth job to keep that level of life going. You know, there was a, com <laughs> there was a commercial on TV for, for something. I don't even remember what it was um, at this point. But a guy was riding, on a, riding lawnmower on his lawn, and he was smiling from ear to ear. And he said, he's pointing out as he goes by, in the ca by the camera, and he's saying, Look at all I have. I have this beautiful house. I have this, you know, this, that, and the other. And he says, Help! I'm drowning in debt. You know, and, and I mean, I thought that was funny because it was just the look on his face and the fact that he said, help me, I'm drowning in debt. And I think it was a, a loan company. But anyway, an ad. Uh, but th that's not the point. <laughs> it's false prosperity. Keeping up with the Joneses, Joneses is also false prosperity. However, when the blessing is on your life, the glory or physical manifestation of the blessing will be seen by others. Look, Abraham was blessed and it was seen in the abundance of material wealth that he possessed. Look at Genesis chapter 13, verses 1 and 2. So Abram went up from Egypt to the Negev with his wife and everything he had, and Lot went with him. Now, Lot was his nephew. Abram had become very wealthy in livestock and in silver and gold. Abraham gave all that he had to Isaac. He gave him his blessing. Genesis 25, verses 5 and 11. Abraham left everything he owned to Isaac. After Abraham's death, God blessed the son Isaac, who then lived near Beer Lahai Roy. Lot who was Abraham's nephew, was so rich because of his connection to Abraham that it, that that was what caused it. Lot's increase came because of who he was associated with. Be mindful of your associations, people, because you can connect either to a blessing or a curse. Now, I'm not talking about hang out with all these, you know, big wigs that have a lot of money. That's not what I'm talking about. But if you're, spe if you're hanging out with, nev with negative speakers, people that speak nothing but... Oh, woe is me, and oh, how are you today? Well, this, that, the other bad stuff happened to me. Murphy's Law, blah, blah, blah. Then you know what? That's what you're going to be like, and that's what you're going to reap. The blessing can be released when you sow your finances into the life of an anointed man or woman of God. It's not that I'm saying tithe or make offerings, but you know what? When you plant seed in other people's lives for, for good, you're blessing them, then the blessing comes back on you. Abraham won a war took the spoils of the battle, and found a priest to whom he could give the tithe, or tenth of his goods. Abraham gave to Melchizedek, the high priest of Salem. Look at Genesis 14, verses 18 through 23. Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God Most High, and he blessed Abram, saying, Blessed be Abram by God Most High, creator of heaven and earth, and praise be to God Most High, who delivered your enemies into your hand. Then Abram gave him a tenth of everything. The king of Sodom said to Abram, Give me the people and keep the goods for yourself. But Abram said to the king of Sodom, With raised hand I have sworn an oath to the Lord, God most high, creator of heaven and earth, that I will accept nothing belonging to you, not even a thread or the strap of a sandal, so that you will never be able to say, I made Abram rich. Melchizedek released the blessing by speaking words over Abraham. He blessed Abraham. So let's look at that. This is really something you need to see for yourself. All right, here we go. Blessed be Abram, or Abraham, the man of the Most High God, the possessor of heaven and earth. Abram had a covenant with God. He was blessed and walked in the blessing. He had the same blessing that Adam had on him. Adam was given dominion and possession of the heaven and the earth. He gave it, he gave it away. <laughs> God blessed Noah with the same blessing. Then he made a covenant with Abram and walked in blood to seal it. Abraham knew who he was. He knew he walked in the blessing because God had told him he was blessed. He called him blessed. He spoke the blessing over him. However, Melchizedek didn't know Abram, never saw him before in his life. 
Abram looked for a priest that he could give the tithe of the spoils of war to. He had just fought into in the, this uh, the war of the kings, and um, so he wanted to give the spoils of war a tenth of the spoils of war into the kingdom of God. When he came, Melchizedek knew this all about him. He knew he was blessed. He spoke it out. Blessed be Abram of the Most High God. And he knew he was blessed and called out the blessing who is the possessor of heaven and earth. Praise God. See it? We are Abraham's seed. That blessing is ours as well. It is on us. We are the possessors of heaven and earth, my friends. The dominion was spoken into Abram's life and we, his seed, were promised the same blessing. So it's time we begin to walk in our blessing. Amen? Jesus is our high priest after the order of Melchizedek, Hebrews 6.20. Where our forerunner Jesus has entered on our behalf, he has become a high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. See, Jesus has already declared us blessed. When you give your tithes and offerings to an anointed man or woman of God, you're sowing into the anointing of God. You give of your finances in exchange for the blessing. You give of your time in exchange for the blessing. The blessing is the root to the fruit, or material prosperity and wealth. The blessing is in and on your life. Activate it daily. Give thanks to God that you are blessed and you walk in that original blessing. Praise God. Can you see how powerful this is? I hope that you received this today. I pray that you did. If you have a need for further assistance with understanding the message, please do contact me. I want to remind you that you can tune in on Mondays and Tuesdays at 10 a.m. and on Thursdays at 3 p.m. Pacific Time for the master classes here on Spreaker.com. Our contact information is the website www.themasterstouch.org. You may email me at masterstouchhs at cox.net. That's masterstouchhs at cox.net. Poet at cox.net. Poet, P-O-E-T, poet at cox.net. Or M-T-H-S prayer at cox.net. That's M like mother, T like Tom, H like Harry, S like Sam, prayer at cox.net. Remember, Proverbs 4, 7 tells us that wisdom is the principal thing. Uh, so therefore get wisdom, and in all you're getting, get understanding. And make sure you're keeping Jesus Lord of your life. The Master's Word class is a subsidiary of the Master's Touch Healing School of Ministry International. We are a 501c3 organization, and may God bless you all with his knowledge and understanding as you endeavor to live in his will and better the lives of others with his love. As Jesus is, so are we in this world. God bless you. Mm -hmm.